Mike Tyson has come out in recent weeks and defended his prediction or defended his assertion, should I say, that Anthony Joshua is the number one heavyweight in the world and he beats all the other guys out there. Mike Tyson has come out and defended it. He said, look, I could be wrong. And I'm paraphrasing here. He said, look, I could be wrong, but I still think Anthony Joshua beats all those guys, as in Wilder and Fury. He still believes in the man. Um, and he's been asked about AJ in the Andy Ruiz rematch. And this is what Mike Tyson had to say about that. He said, he made a mistake, got hurt and shit happens. You can win it back though, but his mind has to be right. He ain't going to win it back if his mind is effed up. His mind's got to be right. He's got to dedicate his life to doing this. He's got to stay away from himself. When we go training, we go away in the mountains. We're staying away from ourselves and our thoughts. In the mountains, away from everybody, just the animals and the woods and stuff. You're facing your demons alone. His spirits appear well to you, but in his mind, what's going on in his mind? This stage in his life really makes them because when they already have money uh, now, now it's about who are you? Now you're dealing with adversity. Who are you? What are you going to do now? Are you going to lay down now and say, hey, I don't want no more. Do you stay down and give it up? Or do you believe in it? You got any F in pride? What do you believe in? Do you believe in your ancestors, your mother, your father, your kids? What do you believe in? What have you got to fight for? And then it's up to him. I don't believe in <laughs> bleep, maybe. I've got money. I don't believe in none of this. And that's cool too, if it's not who you are. So those are the words of Mike Tyson. I'm going to try and discern exactly what he was getting at here. He's talking about Anthony Joshua's mindset. Uh, He's talking about going out to the woods and being in seclusion and all this kind of stuff. Different strokes for different folks. You've got different types of characters, okay? Some individuals, to get the best out of themselves, they need to go into a secluded training camp where there are no distractions around, where they can just be by themselves, just concentrate fully on training, etc. But for other fighters, that's not the best thing for them. It all depends on your character. You know, Mike Tyson and Anthony Joshua are very different characters. Mike Tyson was a much more impulsive, emotional character, much more naturally aggressive. Anthony Joshua is a more cerebral individual, more laid back, more calculated, far less emotional. So what's best for AJ might be very different than what's best for Mike Tyson. AJ also, the impression I have of him is that he's quite a private person. His circle is very tight, doesn't let that many outsiders into his circle. This is the impression I have of him. Whereas with Mike Tyson, he was actually more of a, an open type of character. Yeah. Many people, randoms knew Mike Tyson. Many people were invited into Mike Tyson's home, to Mike Tyson's parties and all that kind of stuff. He was a much more open kind of individual than Anthony Joshua, who seems to be quite a guarded character. I know he's been out on sabbatical sabbatical in Nigeria recently, uh, walking around in the slums and meeting the people. But that's a PR situation, right? Is Anthony Joshua really going to go walking around in the slums in Nigeria by himself? Obviously not, right? He had, I'm sure, security and the media and all that kind of stuff with him. It's a PR opportunity as well as, you know, wanting to go to his, his ancestral home and what have you. But in his day-to-day -day life, is Anthony Joshua really an open character? The point I'm making is, if going away to the mountains works for Mike Tyson, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for AJ. Maybe for AJ, he needs to be around the people. You know, maybe going back or going, you know, well, yeah, back to Nigeria because he says he went to boarding school in Nigeria when he was a young boy. Maybe going back to that is him going back to his roots, is him trying to discover who he is and what he's really all about and if he really wants this and what he's fighting for. All the questions that Mike Tyson asked at the, uh, the end of this quote here, maybe Anthony Joshua is asking those questions. Maybe that's part of what the trip to Nigeria is all about. You know, walking through the slums, yeah, that's a nice photo op. What else is he doing when he's there? Is he going to visit family? I suspect he is. 
Is he going to the ancestral home? Uh, I don't know what tribe Anthony Joshua is from. I'm going to assume he's a Yoruba Nigerian. Will he go to the Yoruba, you know, shrine? I mean, I don't, I don't know where his, uh, his views are when it comes to religion. Uh, but, you know, is he into the native Yoruba religion? Is that something that means something to him? You know, I mean, we heard Deontay Wilder, for example, talk about uh, being into the native Nigerian religion. Yeah. So, and, and I talked about that, by the way, on my Patreon. I did an interview with a friend of mine who's a Yoruba Nigerian several weeks ago on Patreon. And we were talking about witchcraft in Nigeria and stuff like that and his experiences with it being initiated uh, and what have you. Fascinating stuff for those of you who uh, want to learn about that kind of that, that kind of thing. And he also revealed certain celebrities, extremely well-known black celebrities in America who, according to my Nigerian friend, are practicing, because he knows about Yoruba native religion, and he says these people are practicing the native religion because you can see it. You can see the symbology in their videos and stuff like that in their pictures. And they're practicing this uh, native religion. And again, if you want to learn more about that, sign up to my Patreon. But anyway, back to the matter at hand here. Uh, Anthony Joshua, has he made too much money to be hungry enough to beat Andy Ruiz in the rematch? I guess that I guess that's the question that Mike Tyson is asking at the end of this quote here. Um, he's saying, you know, Anthony Joshua's got money and he doesn't believe in any of the pride and, you know, fighting for honor and all that kind of stuff because you've already got the money, so what are you really fighting for? That's what Mike Tyson is essentially trying to get at there. And I guess we'll find out in the Andy Ruiz fight because it's like Marvin Hagler said with a famous quote, it's very difficult to get up and do road work at 5 a.m. in the morning when you're wearing silk pajamas, <laughs> you know, when you've made it in life and you don't really have any hardship anymore, why are you putting yourself through the hardship of training? Why are you putting yourself through the hardship of sparring? Why are you putting yourself through the hardship and the danger of being involved in professional fights when you've made all this money? You know, Anthony Joshua has had a very successful career from a financial point of view, and a very tough career. This guy's been in tough fights, right? The Dylan White fight was tough. The Klitschko fight was tough. Even the Povetkin fight was tough. I mean, the Takam fight weren't easy. And of course, the Andy Ruiz fight was a bad beating that AJ took there. And for all the beatings we've seen him take in the ring, for all the tough fights we've seen him have in the ring, imagine how many tough spars he's had over the years. So this is tough. Does he really want it? These are the questions Mike Tyson is asking. Um, but again, sometimes fighters or just people can project their own personality and their own pathology onto other people. And they'll think, well, because I was in this particular mindset, he's going to be in this mindset too, having gone through a similar situation. But that's not necessarily the case. As I say, people react to situations differently. It all depends on, you know, the personality. Yeah. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Mike Tyson's uh, views here on Anthony Joshua. Is he just being stubborn when he says that AJ is still the top guy out there in his estimation? Is he just trying to defend his prediction? Or is that something that he truly believes? How highly do you value Mike Tyson's opinion? When it comes to his opinion on boxing, from the technical aspect of it, um, I value Mike Tyson's opinion very highly. Mike Tyson is a boxing scholar. Make no mistake about that. This guy knows boxing better than most people in the world. Right? Mike Tyson knows all about fight fighters from the early 1900s and the 1800s. Mike Tyson knows all kinds of stuff about boxing. He's very much a boxing scholar. Uh, he studied many different styles and what have you. Uh, but when it comes to the mental aspect, the emotional aspect, he knows a lot, but I don't think he's as well qualified dealing with that side of it as he is with the 
the, the technical side of it because he understands technique and styles very, very well. But the mental aspect, you know, Mike Tyson, very emotional character, not as cerebral as some other people. Yeah. And I guess that was to some extent a little bit of his downfall. Uh, Mike Tyson, as I spoke about in a recent podcast, Mike Tyson was always a follower rather than a leader as a human being, not as a fighter, as a human being, he was always a follower. He's always someone who would gravitate towards the strongest personality in the room, be it Castamado, be it Don King, be it Jimmy Jacobs, be it Donald Trump, because Mike Tyson was friends with Donald Trump many decades ago. Tyson was always looking for that father figure that he missed out on growing up, somebody to guide him, somebody to advise him. Other people, they don't feel like they need that. They're self-guided. They're self-advised um, to, to, to a great extent. Uh, some people are natural leaders. Yeah, Mike Tyson was never really that. Tremendous fighter, tremendous, you know, uh, spirit for fighting. Vicious. But as a person in the world, he wasn't the most charismatic individual. He wasn't the kind of person who walked into a room and have everybody eating out the palm of his hand. That, that's never been Mike Tyson. That was Muhammad Ali. Oh, Ali was a very natural alpha male, unbelievably charismatic, have a whole room eating out of the palm of it. That was Ali. Even Tyson Fury these days, he's more naturally that way inclined, a natural alpha. Mike Tyson, of course, was an alpha male, but he was an alpha male to a large degree because of the circumstances he grew up in because Mike Tyson was bullied growing up and he was a victim for a long time during his childhood until the bullying got too much and he snapped one day. So he was, his environment turned him into an alpha male rather than him being innately that way. Uh, Muhammad Ali was innately alpha. Muhammad Ali didn't grow up in a ghetto. He grew up in a two-parent family in middle-class Kentucky but he was just naturally alpha, naturally charismatic, had this natural high self-esteem and extremely high opinion of himself. You know, he didn't have to be molded into that. That's who he was in the beginning. <laughs> Whereas Mike Tyson had to be molded into that. Costamato, when he saw Mike Tyson early, he realized he was lacking in inner confidence and he had to build up his self-esteem. You know, anyway, I'm getting onto a whole tangent about Mike Tyson again here, people. Uh, let me know what you think about Mike Tyson's views on Anthony Joshua. Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's happening. I'm out. Today's Patreon podcast is about the very popular Netflix series, Stranger Things, and the subliminal programming which it contains. If that sounds like something you might be interested in listening to, then head on over to my Patreon page for a free sample. That's right. You can go over there right now and there is a publicly accessible sample of today's podcast about Stranger Things. And if you like that, then I would encourage you to sign up to listen to the full episode because the free sample is basically the first third of today's podcast is what you get for free. If you want to hear the podcast, the episode in its entirety, you'll sign up. And you'll also get access to all my previous podcasts. And we're literally talking about hundreds and hundreds of hours of other material that you, you know, get included uh, whenever you sign up. So you sign up, it's less than three pounds a month. There's no contract. You can cancel at any time and you get, an ac you get access to a massive archive of podcasts from me. And as I say, today's podcast is about Stranger Things and the subliminal programming which it contains. All right, so head on over for the free sample. And if it's your kind of thing, then sign up. All right, it's happening. I'm out.